Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Revenant Saga. Call me a liar all you want, but I was originally not planning to do this. But I'm doing it because, well there's a long story and the initial load of this game is so long that I want you to see it. So I can explain while the game's loading. So, the way, um, the way it happened is I wasn't planning on doing this originally because I saw I play PS Vita's first hour of gameplay of this game. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. It looks too similar to As Divine Hearts. I could probably copy and paste my audio from that and not, and have it not, just have it not really stick out so much. But a friend of mine was like, you should do a video on it, come on, your fans would like you if you did it, implying that they wouldn't if they if I didn't. But, at exactly the time we were having that conversation, I got an email. Hi, we just released As Divine Hearts. Not As Divine Hearts, Revenant Saga. You want to do a video on it? Well, now I did. Oh, and by the way, do not try and play this game if you're downloading anything. That initial load was somewhere in the realm of 45 seconds. I waited a minute and a half while Utawara Ramono was downloading in the background. Did not load. So there you go. Not much in the way of options. You can turn off the battle effects and you can turn off the battle shortcut. Um, notably you might want to turn battle effects off if you're going to be using the auto mode a lot because it actually makes the game lag. And you can also restore HP by tapping on it. It doesn't specify what you're supposed to tap on though. I know, it's a bit weird. We're just gonna load straight into my game. I've got two and a half hours in, and thankfully this game's actually really quick to start. So if you, um, if you want to know what this game's like and you've already bought it, playing the first hour will give you an idea of what you're working with. So, we're just gonna load in. I played the two and a half hours to be safe and to find a good place to stop, and this is the place I picked. Now, notably, we are just going to walk into the town and a cutscene is immediately going to start. It's a fairly long one and it'll give you an idea of what the game's writing is like. Also, notably, I can move around here, but as soon as I take like two steps down, that's when the cutscene starts and I can't do anything. I really don't know what they were thinking when they decided to let me do that, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mediocre RPG. What, what can I expect? But anyway, you've got writing. You've got writing. You have English words on the screen. And you have to read it. And annoyingly enough, all the text scrolls really fucking slowly. So if you want to actually read it as a full line, you have to press X. There's no option to make the text speed up. There's also a few problems with the English translation. There's a bunch of weird typos. Like, some words are being used in the wrong place, and something that's notable, every time a pair of speech marks is used... Every time a pair of speech marks is used, there will always be a space after the first set of speech marks. Always. I do not know why this is a thing. It sounds more like a programming error than it does a typographical error. But, Jesus Christ, it is the most annoying thing in the world once you notice it. I am just kind of amazed at how they managed to let some of these slip through, especially that. That, like, did they not test it? Like, I noticed it after, like, two or three times. I'm amazed that nobody noticed it on their way through trying to play the game. That's not how speech marks are supposed to work in English. I know it's a little mini thing, but it's pissing me right the hell off. I just thought I'd mention it. The story is basically... The land is plagued, there's also these revenants running around which are basically just invulnerable monsters and only a few set people can kill them. And you went through this machine that turned you into half human, half revenant, and you have a demon inside you that's threatening to take over you and yada 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 yada. It's, it's slightly more interesting than As Divine Hearts. Only slightly, but the writing quality hasn't really improved. I can't really get a feel for any of these characters whatsoever. I know the basic idea and their motivations, but I don't really have a sense for their characters other than typical tropes. Like, he's he's the big tough guy. The, she's the not so much klutzy, but silly female companion, and your guy is the straight no-nonsense guy. There doesn't really seem to be any sort of character going on with any of these people. 
There's a mad scientist character who really is just the basic mad scientist. And everybody hates each other. <laughs> that That's kind of the way it works in these sorts of games. But, um, well, not everybody hates each other, but just... It's, it's kind of a bit of a standoffish thing, but the writing isn't very good. It's not, it's not detailed. It doesn't give any sort of flair to it. It's just relatively boring. Not, not that much going for it. And I'm kind of disappointed in that. Then again, I'm really not surprised as Divine Hearts wasn't any better. So this one isn't really that much better either. And the towns and the presentation and just everything about this game... Also, notably, it takes you a few seconds to stop walking once you stopped moving, which is a bit odd. It'd be it'd be less jarring to stop um, stop the animation cycle as soon as you stop walking. I only just noticed that. That's kind of annoying. But um, anyway, now we get to wander around town. There's not much else to see and do here, so we can just have a look around. But there's not really that much to see. You've got your inn. You've got your weapon shop. You've got your item shop. Let's go have a look at the weapon shop, actually. It might have some more powerful weapons and stuff for us to use. Uh, by, um... Uh, well... Yeah, he's got a more powerful weapon. Um, and we have bronze, um, aprons. Which will give everybody more defense, so I'll definitely pick those up. Uh... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll deal with that. I don't want to spend too long fucking around in everything. And I don't want to spend too too long fucking around and everything and making everyone just bored. So there, we'll deal with that for now, and we will just leave and go out and head. As a matter of fact, I don't remember where the fuck we were going. I watched this quest before. We should find the north of town. All right, let's do that. So the world map is a basic Final Fantasy style world map. Oh, there's another fucking cutscene. I wasn't expecting to see this. I'll just skip through this. If you want to just like pause it every single frame and just read it. Also, that weird shivering animation comes up a lot and it means a lot of different things and it's really fucking weird. Also, the frame rate seems to go to hell when you're in these cutscenes for some reason. And it just looks weird. Like, it's kind of hard to... It's kind of hard to explain. Oh, there's another... There's another vibration. There's another one. There's another one. Yep. It's weird. I don't know what the deal is, but... Yeah. The frame rate in this game is not that great. And as I... Well, did I say it before or did I say it in the last take? Um, well, either way, the game's battle performance isn't particularly great either. But don't worry, we're guaranteed to see that eventually. Funnily enough, you actually get a ring in this game that gives you an encounter every single step. Which is kind of great. But, um... Yeah, that, that actually helps out for a reason we'll get to shortly. But for now, let's just head north and immediately get into another cutscene because... Fuck this game. <laughs> oh, God. I thought that it would give me a bloody um encounter at this point. But yeah, this is actually pretty relevant to... um. This is actually pretty relevant to how you play the game just because there's an absolute ton of cutscenes and they take ages to read just because you have to hit the X button twice and... It just, it makes me want to talk about the art and the soundtrack and everything. And as I said, as I said, basically with the story and the writing, it's all generic as hell. It just, it, it doesn't really impress in any way. It looks like a slightly higher res version of a generic Final Fantasy style RPG. It doesn't really do anything for me. It's just not, it's just not great. It really isn't. It just, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have that much to say about it. It just feels generic. It just feels... Um, just... I know it's uncomplicated, and I know people who are absolutely desperate for JRPGs would probably be able to deal with it, but as for me, I still have to go and play Trails. And Trails, even though it looks fairly generic itself, it... I mean, it the writing and the world building and just everything feels a hundred times above what this game does. But anyway, we finally get into a fight. So this is what a fight looks like. Yes, it is actually a little 3D representation, which is kind of neat. So we have our three characters. We have the characters. We have a timeline down the bottom there. And this timeline is what's used to determine who goes first. And just the general order of things. 
So you can see, uh, just it, it plays like a pretty typical turn-based battle. There are a couple of other things you can do down here in the command menu. I don't know why they only have attack and command here, and then in command is where you find your skills, your transformation, and your items. But that's how, how it works anyway. So this game has transformation, and transformation in this game basically means you do more damage and take less. But you can't heal, and your little meter down the bottom there slowly rises over time. And if it gets to full, you... Well, not if it gets to full. If it gets to above 50%, you will start to become uncontrollable. And when you are uncontrollable, you'll be attacking just nonchalantly, using abilities nonchalantly and stuff like that. It's nothing particularly... Um, it's nothing particularly massive. Which is kind of disappointing. I was hoping transformations would play more into it. But the thing is, this game's difficulty, like, I was playing on normal mode and it was literally such a snore fest, I could auto battle through every battle, including a, um, including a boss fight. I'm not even kidding. I was able to get through an entire boss fight just by auto, which does not seem right to me. Uh, south is the Elsey Woods, right. I want to go this way then. So yeah, that's, that's the entire battle system. It's, um... Oh, uh, okay, I've stayed... No, I didn't stay transformed. Alright, so, um... There are a couple of other things as well, like, um... Transforming, for example, does give you, like, special skills as well. There are some skills you can't use without... There are some skills you can't use without transforming, that is a thing. Like, say, this guy can only use, um... This guy can only use Dragon Ash when he's transformed, so I might as well do that, actually. I gotta admit, I... Oh, this hits everything. That's good. Oh, but it has to charge, right. That's kind of broken. Don't know what the deal is with that, but that's kind of broken. Notably, this heavy slash attack actually steals items from monsters, which is kind of neat. It's nice having the thief ability right off the bat. But yeah. As you can see, the battles at this point are just extremely easy, and even... I am playing on hard mode. Oh god. Oh, okay. I finally got to activate Burst. And Burst does, um... It basically just lets you get off an extra set of attacks. It's great. Um, there are a couple of other things too. Like, um, if you get an overkill, like you saw there, which is literally just, like, do more damage. Do a lot more damage than the enemy has health. At the end of the battle, you'll get some of your SP back. Which is fairly useful. And you can change, um, how your people act in the auto battle modes and all that and I will show that after maybe one or two more battles you got an item there every five battles that you successfully win you get five Revenant Saga points and Revenant Saga points we'll get to once we dive through the menus because we'll, we'll be diving through the menus quite shortly I assure you so yeah so I'm just going to go into auto mode for this one Notably, this is the best way to get the game to fall over and lag a bit, just because it tends to massively skip frames due to the battle animations. It's a little odd. You can turn off the battle effects in order to make this go by faster, but I've left them on for the purpose of demonstration. It's not particularly impressive. Like, there's no emotion on the faces whatsoever. Like, did you pay attention to Julia, which is the girl with the scythe? How her face barely changed as she was, um, stroking that scythe? Um, it's... Not... Great. Really? Right, I assume this is where I need to go into. I've been through a few dungeons, and they don't really do anything that different either. They just have, like, a bunch of different paths, most of which have treasure chests and stuff like that. I'll do one or two more fights, and then we will... We will go menu diving, because I have to go menu diving in videos like this, don't I? But you get to see more, more cutscenes, because of course you do. Oh, look who's back. I killed him. Okay, take me back to the gameplay now, please. Alright, away we go. So, we just wander around, look for stuff. You can hit the square button to get a zoomed out view of the place that you're in. 
and you also use it to, um, see? Game just, like, froze for a few seconds there, just because that's, that's what happens if you turn on auto as soon as you get into the fight, which is kind of annoying, considering that's exactly when you want to turn it on if you're fighting shit that you're way over-leveled for. I mean, hell, I'm playing on hard, and I'm having no trouble whatsoever. I just need to be slightly careful with, um, just keeping an eye on my mates. Oh, I got a new weapon. I got two new weapons. Alright, fuck it. Time to go menu diving. So, we got items. All these items. Pretty basic stuff. Nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. You can come here to check your skills and use the skills of, um... Use the skills of people that you can use out of battle. Like, I can use heal there, and I can't really use it. Oh, cure. Cures all of normal statuses. Weapon customizing. Now, weapon customizing is fairly simple. Weapons at a base level start out with basically nothing but attack power. But if you come here and use these crystals, it will power them up. So if I use a copper crystal large, for example, I'll go from a pack attack power 6 to attack power 12. And that makes the weapon stronger. However, due to the rate that you swap out weapons, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're ha really having trouble getting past a fight. And even then, you're not going to have trouble getting past a fight. I'm on hard and I'm not having a problem and I suck at RPGs. You can also imbue these gems here and they'll give you a bunch of different things. You can also find weapons out in the world and the weapons have different rarities. So as you see, the Falchion and the Transmeister here have different rarities, and the di extra different rarities can have different effects. For example, this Fauci on here has HP plus 11. That was an effect that was on it. And you can get this with every single weapon that you find. So yeah, Clay Hoops, 50, uh, 67 attack, and it also has an extra ability on it there, which is sheep. I don't remember what that is, but there you go. Uh, Bruno has an extremely rare Swiss Army knife, but I should probably give him the Trans Lasset. I don't even know why I bothered to buy the Bronze da Dagger now. But, as you can see, he's got a ton of extra effects on there, which is kind of nice. And all the weapons work in exactly the same way. Some of them have more room for more abilities, but other than that, it's pretty basic. The quest ability, um, the quest ability, the quest menu lets you check out all your subquests. Yes, there are subquests, and they do give you rewards. The adroit ring is actually, um, the ring... Is that the ring that lets you find an encounter on every step? I don't remember exactly, but... Yeah, you can just come here and um, see all the quest stuff you got here. You can come here for extra help, but I've gone over everything the game has already, so it's not like it matters. Equipment, you can equip armor, a weapon, you can equip rings that do different things, and you can equip gems that do different things. That Berserk gem makes this guy intensely overpowered if you're just looking to grind. It's brilliant. Uh, status, it just tells you all their stats and all their skills. Strategy. You can use your formation here, and formations don't really do anything except determine who takes more damage and who takes less damage. It doesn't really matter. Like, if you're in the back, you'll do less damage, but there are some weapons which are like, that take absolutely no damage penalty whatsoever, which is why I have these two in the back, because it means they just take less damage overall and I don't get any sort of detriment out of it. And this is where you come to change what you do when you're in automatic mode. There's not that much in the way of stuff that you can pick, but there you go. System is where you come to save and load. Thankfully, you can save literally any time you want, but the game does go back to the title screen if you uh, die, basically. If all your party members go down, that's it. That's the end of it. Also of note, if you're transformed, you can't get back up if you get knocked down. So Chumbawamba would be very upset. You can also come to the trophies here, and other than literally finishing the main storyline, the only um, trophies you get is for getting all of these numbers to a specific number. That's it. That's literally all it is. That's all the trophies you're going to get. And those two question marks down there are like mini games. And we come to the shop. This is just like it was in As Divine Heart. You get these points via winning battles, as I said earlier. And these all do different things. You get different accessories. You get different gems. You can buy, uh, like, jewels that give you a ton of money. How do you think I ended up with 100,000 gold right off the bat? I did not grind that shit. You can use this to upgrade your weapons plus 15,000. Remember, well, you might not remember, but the the upgrade that I did that, that made that guy's weapon go from plus 6 to plus 12, that was 300. That's 15,000. So if you're having a little bit of trouble with um, playing through the game, you can come here and buy something to help you out. It's kind of nice. Just having this soul doubles earned experience and just having this soul doubles earned gold, it's... Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically cheats that you grind to earn, which is, 
Uh, it's kind of a neat idea. I don't mind it. It just takes a while to earn anything that's worth half a shit, so it's not like I really care. I just stumble upon- um, like, if I'm playing the game relatively seriously, I'm probably not going to use it. But if I just stumble across it, well, that, that'd be nice. Poison Scorpion, that doesn't sound good. I might as well use a couple of skills to try and get rid of the damn thing. Not like it's going to help, but worth a try. Burst. Yay. How badly did I hurt it? Not too badly, actually. That's, um, that's a little bit surprising. Um, uh, occasionally instant death for beasts, so I want to try this. All the monsters do have different kinds of, um, what's the word? All the monsters do have different types, like, um, that's a, that's a beast there. That's a, okay, that's apparently nothing, alright. Uh, who am I right now? I'm Albert. Alright, let's see if this guy has anything worth stealing. 178 and could not be stolen from, damn. Alright, uh, Julia, what can you do to transform? What do you look like? Uh, like a bitch? <laughs> that's, that's all I got. You, you really do seem like a bitch. That's unfortunate. Poor girl. Um, alright. Mark Slice. Burst. Again. I'm guessing transforming ups your burst ability. Uh, Esther. Esther. I am lisping. Um, <laughs> To be fair, I do have a speech deficiency. I'm just kind of amazed that I don't lisp. That would be a horrible thing. Um, I, I would hate to make you guys want, um, watch these videos when I lisp. It's a shame this game isn't in 3D. I mean, these 3D backgrounds aren't bad. They're not great, but it shows some level of technical competency. I'm just a little bit disappointed that they just haven't put that much effort into it. Um, yeah, it just... A little bit more effort, and this could have been pretty impressive. But, I guess not. See, I just got, um, five Revenant Saga points, because that's what you get. Moving on. I really don't have anything more to say. We're only 22 minutes in, and I'm basically done. I just, I, I got nothing, really. I mean... You can change your difficulty at any time in the menu, and that's why I changed it from normal to hard, and I'm still not having any trouble. It's like... I'm literally just letting Auto do the work for me here. I mean, I'll probably heal everyone up as we get out of this, but... Just, yeah. Basically no trouble at all, even on hard. It really is disappointing. Yay, overkill. We get some of our SP back, which is nice. I don't know if you knock out the um, the guys in the front, the guys in the back um, take more damage or whatever, but... Honestly, it's such a minor thing that I don't really care. How much XP did we get for that? Oh, everybody um, got a full heal anyway, because everybody leveled up, so it's not like it even mattered that we get our SP back, huh? So, it's a thoroughly generic and rather poorly executed if we're going by like the translation and the writing style JRPG. There's nothing that stands out about it. Uh, all the mechanics that do try and make it stand out just aren't particularly great or interesting to play with. It's just... It's just not that fun of a game and I... I, I just... I, I find myself feeling the same way about it as I did as Divine Hearts. It really isn't worth your time just because of how dull and generic it is. If you want an actually good RPG, may I recommend the one and the only Trails in the Sky, which is a lot like this, only it does a way better job of world building, and it has much more enjoyable characters rather than just the generic clerics and villagers and rather tropey, um, well, more cliche than trope characters going on here. I, I just, I don't even know where I'm going anymore, and I don't even care. See, that's, that's just how far you zoom out. It's, it's dull. It's, it's like, you, you'd hope that it'd give you a view of everything that you've, um, seen so far, but... No, they're dicks like that. It's funny, because, um... No, I can't remember what I was going to bloody say now. 
Brilliant. Alright. Uh, and now we will just do the cross buster, which is, again, I don't know why that's broken. But, yeah. 450 damage. I was hoping for more. Screw it. Auto the rest. So yeah, that was a quick look at Revenant Saga. I don't care for it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's 20 fucking dollars. Which is way too goddamn much. Maybe wait for it to be on sale for five before you even consider it. And even then, you should have thoroughly played pretty much every other RPG that's on the Vita first before you even consider this one. That's, that's it. Like, that's literally it. I got, I got nothing else. I do not care. This game's getting deleted as soon as this video is over. And hopefully I'll be able to play a better RPG very shortly. Because I have review code for Utawari Ramono. So, yeah. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.